Genesis 3 and 15, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. This was God speaking to the serpent. Satan is known as the serpent, the dragon, and the devil. You can read that in Revelations 12 and 9. The great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Satan has seed in the earth, offspring if you will. You can read that in Matthews 13 and 38. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. When did it all begin? Genesis 6 and 1 And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and the daughters were born unto them the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and took them wives all of which they chose now this is important this is not a regular man sleeping with a, a woman this is a son of God taking a daughter of man who are the sons of God Job 1 and 6 tells us, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan was among them. And Job 2 and 1, And again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also. Now, it's clear according to those two verses that Satan was considered a son of God. Now let's go back into the days of Noah and see what happened, because this will give us a better understanding. Let's read Genesis 6 and 4. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children unto them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. Giants was mistranslated in the King James Version. The New International Version says Nephilim, which is a correct translation. We have to look into what Nephilim means to get a better understanding of the scripture. In Hebrew, Nephilim means the fallen ones, those who fell. So that's been mistranslated as giants. Now look at this skull. It's not a normal human skull. And they were really giants. In the days of Noah, it was a very wicked place because of the Nephiliums. In Genesis 6 and 8, it says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. He was perfect because he did not mix with the Nephiliums. And of course, Noah was a just man. Genesis 6 and 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Jude 6, and the angels which kept not the, their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So this is important. What did the angels do that caused such a great sin? Jude is quoting from the book of Enoch and continues. Jude 14, Enoch also the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. From the book of Enoch. And I, Enoch, was blessing the Lord of majesty and the king of ages. And lo, the watchers called me, Enoch the scribe, and said to me, Enoch thou scribe of righteousness, go declare to the watchers of the heaven, who have left the high heaven, the holy eternal place, and have defiled themselves with women, and have done as the children of earth do, and have taken to themselves wives. Ye have wrought great destruction on earth, and ye shall have no peace. Ye shall have no peace nor forgiveness of sin, and insomuch as they delight themselves in their children, the murder of their beloved ones shall they see, and over the destruction of their children shall they, shall they lament. Daniel 4 and 13 and I saw the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher, a holy one, came down from heaven. There, Daniel tells us, a watcher is an angel. Daniel also warns us that they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Was Yeshua trying to warn us when he said, 
But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. What was the key event in Noah's time? And it came to pass, when men began to multiply in the face of the earth, and the daughters were born unto them, the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives, all of which they chose. Unfortunately, the flood did not destroy all the Nephilims. Genesis 6, the Nephilims were on the earth in those days and also after that. But the men that went up with the him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giant. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. So these men were compared to grasshoppers. Look at this graph. Look at six feet. Now look at nine feet. Nine feet is not as a grasshopper. Those giants had to have been well over 13 feet. And of course, there is proof of Nephiliums. If you do some research, you'll find that Nephilim burials and graves have been discovered. I just want to remind you that being abnormally tall is just one of the characteristics that a Nephilim may have. In the 1800s in a burial mound in Pennsylvania, human skulls with horns were discovered. Horns that started at the eyebrow and extended two inches above. The skeletons were seven feet tall. Other than the horns, it was anatomically normal. So whatever happened to these skulls? Well, the bones were sent to the American Investigating Museums in Philadelphia. They were stolen, never again to be seen. This happens often with discoveries of Nephiliums. Deuteronomy 3 and 11. For only Og, king of Basan, remained of the giants. Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of iron. Is it not in Rabat of the children of Ammon? Nine cubits was the length thereof, and four cubits the breadth thereof, after the cubit of a man. The standard cubit of a man likely refers to the ancient Hebrew common cubit of 17.5 inches in length. This would mean that his bedstead was after 13 feet in length and 6 feet broad. Some have hypothesized that Og was perhaps as tall as 12 feet, allowing an extra foot for clearance, but that conclusion is based solely on the length of the man's bedstead. Some sources say Og was taller than the wall of Kutel. 1 Samuel 17 and 3 and the Philistines stood on a mountain on one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines, named Goliath of God, whose height was six cubits and a span, and he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of brass. Some traits of the Nephilims are six fingers and six toes. 2 Samuel 2 and 20. And there went out in battle in Gath, where was a man of great stature that had on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number, and he was also born of the Nephiliums. While chances are you're not going to see a giant over ten feet tall, um, Nephilims are still around. They might not be giant. They could be six feet tall or they could even be five feet tall. They're, in, they're mixed with the seed of men. So how do you know who are Nephiliums? As Daniel 2 and 43 says, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. So you're not going to be able to detect them just by looking at them. Matthew 12 and 33, either make the tree good and his fruits good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. Was Yeshua speaking of the serpent seed line when he said this? Matthew 7 and 18. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. So Nephilim isn't going to be good. The fruit of your body is your children. Someone who has a lot of children are considered to be fruitful. 
Deuteronomy 30 and 9 And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thy hand and in the fruit of thy body. This scripture shows two kinds of fruitfulness, that of your works and that of your body. So you can tell an Nephilim by his works and by his seed line. Who was his father? Was his father an Nephilim?